Hello. We are so glad to be here in SOCAP and excited to be with this fabulous panel. Um, I am Ana Laura Fernandez. I work in Fondo de Fondos and I am uh, in charge and leading the impact investing uh, strategy of uh, Fondo de Fondos. And we are collaborating also with Sun and Capital in this effort. Uh, I would like to present first Tania Deep. She is the global treasurer of Grupo Bimbo. As you know, Grupo Bimbo is the world's biggest bakery. And uh, I will ask Tania to please tell us about her story, how she got started in this impact investing world. Thank you. Thank you, Ana Laura. Okay, so a story, and I guess uh, I, I will try to make it short, and because it has been many, many years, okay, since, since this, uh, this project began. And uh, also for me, it's important uh, not to be boring, so uh, <laughs> I will try to put a little bit of sentiment and, and, and emotions into the story, okay? Uh, because believe me, for us, being sitting here, like just showing <coughs> our faces to you, it's 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 not it's not very comfortable, right? Uh, so um, and besides, I know that that of all the things that I I will say here tomorrow, you will remember only less less than ten percent. So no, we will remember everything. Tanya, <laughs> I, I will try we to will. make it short and 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 uh, interesting. Okay, so. Um, as Ana Laura mentioned, I work in Grupo Bimbo, okay? I have been working there for 19 years now. Uh, it, it has been quite a journey. Um, and um, me as being part of the finance department and the treasury and uh, being responsible for a huge amount of money, uh, I mean, that's the, the long story short, me and the team, by the way, to keep players in my team and sitting there. So if you have any questions, it's not me. They should be he sitting here. And um, um, so it's a lot of responsibility, but it's a lot of uh, lack of commitment into an holistic way of living nowadays was also a lack of responsibility, right? So uh, me and my team started the journey of looking and studying and searching. He used to be part of my team. <laughs> <laughs> so he's responsible too. Um, um, start, we started to look uh, and search for innovative uh, uh, mechanisms uh, to do better in investing the portfolios within the company, okay? So, um, I think although it's very difficult for other type of investors, like uh, family offices, which they, Fernanda will tell her story later, uh, but investing and being uh, responsible for the money of a corporation, uh, it's, it's not easy and, um, a regulation and uh, I mean the corporate governance within the com within an enterprise is difficult to handle. So we searched a lot uh, because it was it was the correct thing to do, right? Um, specifically, Grupo Bimbo has a lot of strategies regarding, and, 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 and if I may say, a big commitment regarding. Uh, responsibility, speaking very broadly, right? Environment, social, etc. And And we being part of the finance department, we were like apart from the whole strategy of the company. And it's not correct. And I am using the word, the word correct a lot. I am sorry about that, but I will continue to use it. It, it was not correct. And uh, we needed to do our, our homework as well. Uh, because if you analyze the whole value chain of, a, of a company like Grupo Bimbo, uh, starting from the people that is in charge of buying the uh, the things that are needed to make in bread, right? Uh, the supplies, mm -hmm. exactly. And uh, uh, doing a lot of initiatives regarding, uh, uh, I mean, uh, buying 
to producers that are ESG, etc. And then having a lot of initiative regarding water reusage and, and not waste and uh, renewable energy, etc. And if you go the whole way through the value chain and you end with a product delivered to the customer, uh, and now we are working on, on the packaging initiatives, etc., uh, etc., et where does the finance department and the, uh, and the portfolio within the portfolios within the company stand, right? Um, so we searched and we uh, got to know the concept. I remember that it was eight years ago because uh, I just gave birth to my, my little girl. It was eight, she's eight now. And she was three months old, so somebody invite me, invited me to soak up. And of course, my answer, my immediate answer was, of course not, I am not going. I mean, <laughs> Regina has, is less than three months old. But um, that person convinced me, and I came here, and it, it was a, a very important and special time in my life. Not only because of the birth of my child, but also because I got to live this experience. And, and I can I, I, I am confident on saying that I changed my life uh, in many ways. Uh, so uh, we searched, and it has been eight years now, and uh, I am sitting here, and I am... I, I can, can I say that I am proud of myself? Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> and we're proud uh, you but, came but to I, Soap <laughs> as well. <laughs> but I still need to, I, I mean, we are almost there. We, we, we found a great persons, Julian found them, you and, 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 and Sonnen. And we have been working in, in, in this great project. And uh, I think that's the story. But the, the, but the message of this story is that uh, institutional investors uh, are, are still apart from this landscape, and it shouldn't, right? And uh, I think that what has been uh, achieved by, by us uh, lately is that we, having, we have been able at least to share the message to other corporations. That is not only philanthropy, it's not only, uh, I mean, there's the cycle between innovation, enterprises, uh, 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 we institutional inv investors should become Promote. part of this whole cycle, right? And um, th I think that's my story, Ana Laura. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tania. So I will present now Julian, Julian Farah. He, he comes from an outsourced investment officer uh, for pension funds uh, that's called Spruce View Capital. And I will ask you to please tell us a little bit more about your insights on, on how uh, pension funds who should uh, be involved in the investment, impact investment uh, sure. world. Sure. So, I, th I think to your point, I think there's a, there's a lot of ways in which the pension funds are thinking about investing. I think they, they all revolve around a, a single concept which is very important, which is called fiduciary responsibility. I think uh, in, in many ways uh, that drives the, the investment decision of all of, all of the institutional investors. Because you, you, you have always uh, you always have to take care of your of your people and invest in a prudent way, and, and that's what fiduciary responsibility is about. Now, the, although the definition has not changed, I think the concept of it has become broader for some institutions. I think before uh, to fulfill fiduciary responsibility, you you only had to invest uh, you only had to maximize returns for a given level of risk. For example invest prudently. Now I think more and more institutions around the world are, are starting to, to, to recognize that investments not only produce risk and returns, but they also produce impacts. And, and I think uh, there's, there's a responsibility in, in, in the management teams and, 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 and in asset managers to capture those uh, positive impacts. So. So, so, so to not only maximize return given a, a level of risk, but also maximize impact, uh, not sacrificing return. No, mm -hmm. so, so that profile has has changed, 
uh, slowly, uh, especially in the region. And, and, and that's, we've been talking about that like for, for, for the last years and we've been trying to, to, to convince more people to think that way. And, and, and one example that we use a lot is, uh, it's, as well, if, if, uh, if a person is beginning to work at a certain company, let's say Grupo Imbo, we would like them, we would like him to, to retire in 30, 40 years with the most amount of money, of course. That's, that's, we would like, to, would like to do that for him. But also, we would like him to retire in a, in a much better world. So to the extent that we can, that, that, that we can put the money the, of his retirement to work advancing those objectives, I think we should do that. No? So, I mean, no amount of money uh, is, is enough or, 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 or would compensate to live in an overheated planet or on a broken society. No? So, so I, I think that's a message, and, and, and I think it's difficult to argue against this. It's difficult that one person can tell you we shouldn't incorporate impact uh, or we shouldn't think about the impact because it is part of the fiduciary responsibility that they have to have managing the money on behalf of other persons. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Fernanda, Fernanda Luz. Uh, Luxic, uh, she's a Harvard grad and she represents a family office in Chile and we want to have also the point of view of a family office and how, how will you promote impact investing? I think uh, for me, and it's going to be very different, different from you know, what your journey That's is, your but I'm going to yeah. uh, explain a little bit of how I got into impact investing. Mm -hmm. So I'm part of this Chilean conglomerate in Chile, that uh, has um, activities in mining, financial services, and food and beverage, amongst others. And I think uh, for me, when I, when I grew up basically in this privileged uh, family, I was always reminded by my parents that I should, you know, in some way or shape or form, give back. And that what I was living right now, it wasn't the reality of a lot of people especially in Latin America, so I was, we were always exposed to different realities, to different way of life, so we grew up knowing that what we had was a good opportunity and a responsibility in the future. And so basically when I went to college in Boston College, I took a class called Social Enter Entrepreneurship. I didn't take it because I had a particular passion for social enterprise, I didn't even know what it meant. I just took it quite frankly, because I thought I was going to get an ECA in the <laughs> class. <laughs> and uh, the project did not require a lot of work, or I, that's what I thought. It ended up being quite the opposite. <laughs> it was, you know, the first time I, I stayed until six in the morning finishing a project. But it also was a class that taught me about impact and business. And so this was the first time I, I actually got uh, the idea that you could do business with impact. So after that, I worked in a non-profit uh, that basically dealt with political and economic issues in Latin America. And this exposed me, you know, again to the region and made me fall in love, or back in love with the region and understand that we, there is a real need. And after that, my past two years, I've been in Harvard Business School and basically I graduated, thank God, in May. But uh, basically, I did an impact investment track because I already had all these ideas that I should be doing something else and a sustainable practice. So with a professor there, we did a project about impact investing in the region. I'm not going to go into too many details about it because the panel is about the opportunities and challenges, so I don't want to give it away. But basically, what we found was there are big opportunities. And so right now, what I'm doing for my uh, sake is... We're developing this impact investing fund with a business partner that she's in the crowd um, in the region. So we're developing, trying to understand what you know we can do to attack. Uh, and basically, I want to take a little bit of your time to just uh, mention what is happening these past days in Chile. I think uh, it's a shame, you know, what's happening. Uh, I think no one ever saw this coming in Chile. But I think we should all take this as a wake-up call that social you know, unrest and inequality is not sustainable. And the call, basically, the wake-up call for us is that we should be doing something else. And I think in this, in this sense, it not only uh, seeks for an opportunity, but impact investing 
as a need in the region. Like we, there's actually a need for impact investing. And I think there's a need to change the way we've been doing business. And uh, yeah, so I'm excited about the region. And then your question about uh, <laughs> yes, I, <laughs> measurement. I, I will ask no, you. About, about no, my, it, it my, my definition, right, of yes, impact. You wanted us to, to know, because we, we had a chat before, and we decided that there are different comp concepts about impact. Yeah. So you wanted uh, us to share Yes, uh, so I think uh, for, mm -hmm. for definition of impact, and I, you know, I, I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth, but <laughs> I think all of this panel will define impact differently. And I don't think that's a bad thing for us because we're targeting inequality. Impact for me is democratizing access to basic goods like services and uh, creating opportunities that people don't have, basically. So it's a transformational change in the way we've been doing you know, what we're doing. So for me, so I don't know if anyone wants to, you know, give their own definition, but... Oh, I, I think, uh, as I was well taught uh, by Raul over here, I think just recognizing that every investment has impact, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's negative or, or positive, it's just capturing the, the positive side of it and, and measure it and, and, and make sure you understand it. I think, I think the definition must be very flexible and it really depends on what you focused and, and, and what's the specific project that you're doing. Uh, But, but, I, but I think being flexible is important and, 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 and understand the broader concept is, is as well. For me, it's really important in the impact aspect to have really clear outcomes. When you have those out outcomes and, and you are generating them, then you are generating impact. So it was something I wanted to share. Correct. Uh, at last, please, Sandra, Sandra Sainz from Promotora Social. Uh, I wanted to ask you, how, how was this transition or this evolution of Promotora Social from philanthropy to an institution that is now investing in impact investing? And uh, probably it was, first it was only in Mexico and now there is a probability of it to be in all Latin America region, so can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. Uh, well, I'm, I'm Sandra Sainz. I, I come from a, an orga, an orga, Mexican organization that is called Promotora Social Mexico. And for those of you who don't know what, what this institution is all about, it is one of the pioneer organizations in Mexico that start uh, the movement of impact investing. So it's a pretty exciting place to be at. I recently joined the, the organization. I, I was invited to join as a as director of investments. And this, this uh, institution has done a, a very, um, let's say, they, they, they were pioneers. They were one of the first uh, organizations that was really trying to do impact investing uh, from, different, from different aspects. So they, they start doing also philanthropy and providing donations to, to non-for-profit organizations that were trying to, to, to impact the, um, and improve the quality of life of the most uh, vulnerable population in Mexico. Uh, they also started providing uh, and looking for investment opportunities in terms of equity and also providing financing solutions to entrepreneurs and companies that were looking into that same space, which is the, the space of, of improving the quality of life of, of the underprivileged and the bottom of the pyramid. And thirdly, building up the ecosystem of uh, impact investing in Mexico. So the challenge was great. I mean, the company set up a very, very large and important challenge. And they start doing it, by, they start doing it and learning by doing. So um, first they invested in funds that also were, were doing impact in the region or in Mexico specifically uh, to learn from them how, how to do this. But they were also learning, so it was like a... a collective uh, effort to understand how to better um, tap those needs and how to do it from, from an investing perspective. Um, after 10 years of doing this, uh, now we're in a moment where we are making a stop and rethinking from all that we've been doing, what makes sense to continue doing and what should we change in order to increase our impact. And, and, and it includes also the fact that uh, maybe we should not only focus on one region, maybe should, we should also include other regions because the problems that we are facing, the challenges that we are trying to, to solve or help some others solve are, are not specific to our country. 
they are they are general in the developing world world so i think that that is an avenue that we may we want to explore uh, the other is uh, understanding the different the different ways in which you can you can provide this this uh, impact right uh, so in order not to extend myself so much, I would say that in a nutshell, a promotora is it's a pioneer and it's trying to it's still learning of how to do this this effort, and it's also looking and it's all, has always been very collaborative in in this space because we do believe that this can only be achieved this huge goal can only be achieved if we all join forces with the different type of investors that are sitting here in the stage and all of you who are in, in, interested in this space. So uh, that, that is basically what we are doing at Promotora. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra, so much. Uh, Tania, can I return to you? <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about the challenges of impact investment for, for you? Okay. Um, Where to start? <laughs> <laughs> First, I can sitting, summarize sitting it has been eight years. <laughs> <laughs> it has been eight years, and uh, I, I guess I am not supposed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> Okay. Please. <laughs> am I allowed? Uh, no, it, I mean, it's not easy. Uh, it's very frustrating that. Uh, Globally, uh, as I mentioned in, 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 in at the beginning, there is tons of money in the institutional side, right? Um, and it's very frustrating and very sad and uh, that we institutional investors haven't been able to understand, right, the, the, the relevance and the the responsibility that we do have nowadays and I mean no, not nowadays I mean the responsibility responsibility that we have, that we have. Mm -hmm. um, basically I think uh, that there are three uh, specific things that I, I, I want to share mm -hmm. um, first of all is uh, that uh, as Julian mentioned institutional investor, investors have a fiduciary responsibility right in terms of being responsible of handling the money either of pension plans or the company's money that is supposed to be saved to to grow the company right and um, the corporate governance inside an enterprise is complicated it's uh, it's there are very few companies that have been able to modernize or to or of to uh, stand up with the new standards that are required for this to happen uh, it has that that part i think has been very difficult i mean the the task to make or to convince on, or to teach the the top management of a company is not easy. It's the same like when you are trying to assess risk, right? Uh, companies are there, or most of them, I am not saying that everybody, but compa companies are there to give value to the shareholders, right? And, uh, and that's, a very, that's a very constrained definition of a, of a purpose of a company. Uh, I think that that's not correct, again. Uh, companies are supposed to be there to give value to all the stakeholders, not the shareholders only. And the, for me, the st uh, from Grupo Bimbo, I, I think that the stakeholders are also the communities and are also uh, the environment, right? Absolutely. Because if Grupo Bimbo wants to be a sustainable company and wants to, uh, uh, I mean, survive or, 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 or to be alive in 30 years, it means that Grupo Bimbo also wants this planet to be around and, and the communities to be uh, healthy, etc. Uh, but this, these things that I think that we in this room all understand, because if you are sitting here, it's because you understand this or you are trying interested, to, yeah. uh, you're interested mm -hmm. in the topic. Uh, talking about this within uh, a committee in a huge company, it's, it's really, really difficult. So, um, 
that, that has been a, a huge challenge. Then I think that uh, modernizing or introducing innovation into finance, uh, it's also very complicated because, uh, I mean, we all still follow uh, the vision frontier, right? Yes. As we, the, it was taught to us many years ago, and um, I think Markowitz is still in the head of, uh, of all investors. And um, these two dimensions, ways of approaching a portfolio performance, which is risk and return, is, is not good enough nowadays. And um, the metrics and the measurement that, that we uh, finance, I mean, as part of a financial team, still continue to report is, is we should throw those, that, that to the garbage can. <laughs> really? Or include, I mean, or include more, more I new mean, things we need, and, we need to and elaborate approach. more mm -hmm. and we need to, to, to find a way to communicate mm -hmm. also integrity within, within, uh, within the financial parameters, right? That's mm -hmm. another thing that has been a huge challenge. And um, I think, I think that's it. The most, I mean, the, the most important for myself, right? Mm -hmm. And for corporations, it's also the challenge to invest in other things besides their businesses and besides real estate. No, that that is that what we have been doing before, and we will continue doing this. So, so to break and to have this new way of investing is is something challenging. Yes, and, as well. and besides. Uh, Letting them know that, I always use this example, if I report to the committee the quarterly results of, of the portfolios and I say that, uh, imagine that we have 50% of the portfolio invested in the S&P index, okay? And 50% in only gover I mean, government uh, uh, instruments, right? Mm -hmm. And I lose, I mean, the portfolio loses, let's say, 10% of the value. I mean, rate of return minus 10%. Uh, it, I mean, it, it's not good, of course, but that's the market, right? But if I, uh, if I present to the committee the same minus 10%, but I, was invest, uh, but I invested part of the portfolio in impact or in another type of asset that is not like traditional, traditional mm -hmm. I am sure that they will fire me, right? And, <laughs> and, 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 and it's not correct, again, mm -hmm. the world. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. so, so we are, I mean, we are evolving, uh, mm -hmm. we are going there, but, but still a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. Fernanda, can you share us with us some challenges as well, please? <clears throat> I think the, the biggest challenge for, I guess, like family offices is that impact uh, has, a negative, unfortunately, a negative connotation. So whenever you, and it goes to a little bit what you mm -hmm. said, uh, when you say you're going to invest for impact, they automatically think that financial returns are going to be you know, out of the door, which is not the case. And also um, the way that it's structured as a family office, like incentives for the investors that work in the family office are based in commission. So they have zero incentive to try something new because they li literally earn money by doing good financially. Mm -hmm. That's you know, how they're measured. But I think in this, in this sense, um, the challenge and also like the, the opportunity, I guess, it's to go straight to the, to the head of the family and try to convince them to say, okay, maybe you're you know, not going to, to, to get you know, the financial returns, but like, let's try this way or an alternative way to do what you're already doing, like mm -hmm. philanthropy, but let's try this other way. And if you get returns, great, if you don't know. But I think the challenge right now to prove that is that we don't have enough success cases of impact in Latin America. And I think that if, if, if we can change, I mean, if, if I'm in a position where I can, you know, impulse my family to, to take the leap of faith, basically, and prove mm -hmm. that you can get both, you can get impact and you can get financial returns as well, then I think that's, you know, the opportunity. We're increasingly having more, <laughs> more cases, but I think Sandra yeah, wanted important. to share something about these challenges as well. Well, I, I mean, I do agree that uh, this is a new evolving industry, at least in our region. So we need to, as investors and co as current investors in, in impact, we need to prove and showcase that impact and returns are, are feasible. Mm -hmm. in, and you, what, what we need, and I mean, that is also a challenge, is we need to find the ways, the structures that, that 
provide this, no? or that can generate this in, our, in the companies that we're supporting. Because uh, social enterprises and, and companies that are in the, in the impact space may need different type of structures, not the traditional financing that other companies need. And we, if we are creative enough to provide those, need, those finance, financing needs uh, in, in an efficient way, we may get the return, we may, make, may help these companies to be sustainable in the medium and long term and return back the equity that, to the investors, which at the end of the day is going to be the story that we need to replicate in order to attract more investors into the space. So I do believe it's possible, actually, in, in Promotora's portfolio, we have, uh, I'm happy to say, several cases of, of social companies that are doing a wonderful work with a lot of impact and are also financially mm -hmm. uh, successful companies and that are growing and that have scalable business models. And those are the type of, of models that we want to replicate and, and cherry pick and support, right? Because this is, this is what's really going to make our industry grow. Absolutely. Julian, can, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, how you, which opportunities you see in Latin America for pension funds? Sure. Um, I, I, think, I think a lot of impact has been focused in Latin America in, in, in private equity and private markets and smaller companies which are private, smaller projects uh, which are private. But impact can also be seen in global equities and fixed income, in, in, like in broader asset classes where institutional investors are more familiarized. So, so ha having said that, I, I see a, a, a lot of opportunity in ideas that are that already fit into those asset classes which pension funds are, are very familiarized with uh, uh, that, that, that it can that it can be easier to, to for them to for them to invest no so that, that's that's one that it's important especially in Latin America if we look at the if we look at the, our, our corporate pension funds and institutional investors few of them invest in in impact but, but really it's because few of them invest in private markets as well, mm -hmm. right? So, so that's one. And, and the same challenges that, that we are describing over here in Impact, the same challenges are, are the ones facing the private markets in, in, in Latin America. Few exits, uh, not a lot of uh, cases of success, experience of management teams. I mean, those themes go across uh, a lot of investments in the private side, no? Uh, having said that, I think also globally, with the level of rates where they are, how, how the, 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 the seek for yield and the seek for returns, uh, given given where the rates are globally, not especially in Latin America, but globally, I think this has tilted investors to to find some other ways to get returns, which which they have found some things in Latin America. So I think, I think this, is a, this is a good period for, I mean, I, we've seen a lot of institutional money uh, looking at Latin America for where yields are, for where opportunities are. It's a, there's a nascent venture capital uh, industry. Uh, there's, a, there, there's a more developed private equity industry, but we have to prove ourselves, mm -hmm. right? But, but, but I see, I think the, they recognize the opportunity that, that, that's, that's out there. And it's a growing ecosystem, mm -hmm. no, in, in Mexico and all Latin America. And I don't know if you want to share something else with us, with opportunities, Sandra, would you? In terms of opportunities, um, yes. well, I think that there's as many opportunities as there are challenges in the region. There's so many problems that are unsolved in terms of, of, uh, of equality, of service, basic services that should be provided to the population and that are not. Uh, one space that I, where I see a huge potential is health space. Uh, I mean, it's very it's very known by by uh, I mean by everybody that the region uh, it's it's behind in terms of quality and, and in, in coverage of, of health services, in, in, especially in the in the in the in the basis of the of the pyramid, but in general. And, uh, and the government and the public institutions do not have the infrastructure nor the, the budget to be able to cope with the growth of demand of these services. The, there's a transition of, 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 of epidemic, of the, the, the type of sicknesses that are attacking our, our population. So there's many ch challenges in different fronts. And, and that is a space where I see a lot of, of opportunities because 
there's technology that can that can alleviate those those needs uh, used in, in diagnosis, used in, 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 in treatments. Uh, there's many business models that work in other developing countries that have shown that they that have proved uh, successful and that we could also replicate with a tropicalization, of course, of the business model, but that we could replicate in our in our region and that could solve a lot of problems. There's also there's actually some cases in Mexico where companies look into what is working on in India or in other geographies and have brought those models into Mexico with success. So I think that we, I mean, if there's money and there's wish to, to help, I, there's, there's a lot of opportunities that could turn also into good investment opportunities in terms of financial returns. That is just one space, but I, I mean, there's, there's the energy space as well, the, the, the clean energy sector where there's a lot of to be done, um, and well, many others, no? agriculture. I can think of, of several sectors that where, where we are far behind of what we should be, and, and as a region, we can, we can you know, look into what else is going on in the world and what can we bring to... to, to and there, to there are cases for that, like, like for example, Salauna, that they went to India and find out a, a very good model exactly. to be efficient, giving healthcare in the ophthalmological uh, opportunities and giving access to people of the base of the pyramid to this so we, as Tanya mentioned earlier also, that they don't have to be based in the region. Mm -hmm. uh, these opportunities could come from elsewhere oh, and of then course. be replicated in, in the region. So I think that is really important. I don't want to... No, no, I, I totally agree. Although mm -hmm. I, I, I want to uh, add another challenge that came to my mind, which is, I think, uh, the biggest of the two that, I mean... You should have told me that the biggest challenge, I didn't mention it. Um, regulation. Yes. Uh, uh, Policies. And poli yeah. Regulation yeah. mainly, yes. Uh, it's not that there's no money, and it's not that there's no will in humans, I think. It's just that we... M money and... Uh, and, and these initiatives do not talk to each other because there's a barrier in the middle, okay? There's a barrier in the middle that it's very difficult to break. I mean, we have been trying to break that barrier many mm -hmm. years, for many years now, and, and it has been... It's not impossible, we're almost there, uh, but uh, it has been a stopper. Right? Mm -hmm. So, public policies, we need to focus on that. I mean, uh, it's great that there are those big, uh, incredible projects and new technology, innovation, and willing from humanity, etc. But we need regulation. Right? We need a change in regulation. In regulation. Uh -huh. But we, we need to start asking for it. So, uh, that's right. That's, I, I, that's was, I, was, I was thinking about it before. And why that hasn't happened? Because, of course, regulation comes after this, there's a need, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to raise our hands. Absolutely. And uh, we need to work a lot in public policies, mm -hmm. really. I mean, I think that there, therefore, should be uh, targeted there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would like us uh, to think of what can we do to promote more impact investment in, in Latin America. So, who wants to start? I mean, marketing people. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes, well, we need to, I mean, to tell I more mean, stories it's, it's of what we're doing yeah. and how, uh -huh. how the ecosystem tell is the growing. And and how, uh -huh. Well, having you here, all these investors interested in uh -huh. investing in Latin America, in, in different sectors for health, uh, education, agriculture, uh, green energies. You have a really interesting uh, commitment in BIMBO for having all, all clean energy for 2000. 2025, we're 2025. supposed to be 100% renewable energy globally, which mm -hmm. is 32 countries. It's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes, yes, it's, it, it, I mean... You're right. Those are uh -huh. the examples that, that we want to share and, and we want people to know and that we need to have more... more and also, Ana Laura, let me add, we mm -hmm. need to have a common language. Absolutely. Uh, whenever yeah. I go to see an entrepreneur and, and uh, I mean, or, or even a, 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 
a governmental project, and they start talking about biodiversity and uh, etc. And the, the, uh, we find, I mean, we in the financial teams really don't understand Perfect. your language. I mean, we need to find a common language. Mm -hmm. I think that's also important. Mm -hmm. And I think to that to that point, which is which is very valid. Uh, the, uh, we, we often find entrepreneurs and often find projects that are not aware that they compete with other investment with possibilities passing. around the world, mm -hmm. right? So, so the, I think I think the region uh, as a whole needs to be aware that that as an investor. I mean, you, you, you can invest in a lot of projects. So you, you really are competing with the whole world, with a lot of projects, whether they're impact or not. We're seeking both. So it's not because uh, you, you have impact, then we should look into the, into, into the project. I mean, we often find projects that are very good, that are very nice ideas, very inf impactful, but are not ready for institutional money. I think that's, that's, a, very, that's a very strong challenge in Latin America, no? The, the, the pitches, the, like what we've seen in, in the US, what we've seen in Europe. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, completely I different. Mean, yeah. I mean, the culture. Let, is let me ask one yeah. statistic that for me was impressive. When, when we were investing in 56 funds in, in, in Mexico, uh, what we, we asked them to tell us how many opportunities they had seen and how many uh, at the end they invested in. It was 1,000 opportunities and the investments were eight. So that's mm -hmm. how a fund selects their the I think investment. like to that point, I think the ecosystem in Latin America is just developing, right? Yes. So I think there's a challenge in like cultural as well because we can't compare ourselves with, with the United States that mm -hmm. they have a lot of success cases. And basically mm -hmm. when you're young, you want to be, and I think I was talking to you about this, you want to be an entrepreneur. You kind of like want innovation, right? In Latin America, I think if I tell my parents I want to be an entrepreneur, they would have a heart attack, you know? They're like, no, go study law or do, you know? But, but it's so, great that it's changing. Yeah, uh, so I, I think there is, in the positive mm -hmm. side, because I tend to be a little more, you know, yes, like <laughs> positive, uh, the cultural is changing. Like entrepreneurs yes. now, so little kids want to be entrepreneurs. They see new bank, they see Rappi, and they're, they're like, oh, like, you know, I can be that person, you know, that uh, company that is successful, Absolutely. not only like yes. national, but regional. There is a study in Mexico that says that uh, kids between 15 and 25, 65% of them want to be entrepreneurs. So we have a very good base there of people wanting to be entrepreneurs. And if you ask our parents' generations, it was like, no, I will get a stable job yeah, and <laughs> raise yeah, I, a family. I don't, I don't want to maintain you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> get out of my house. Get out. Get out. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I think that adding to that point, um, what, I, what I see when I compare the entrepreneurs in the region with entrepreneurs outside, and I had the opportunity in my previous professional lives to, to work with uh, entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley, to work with entrepreneurs in Israel. And what I see, and it's stunning, is, that, is the, the, the mindset, the global mindset that these entrepreneurs elsewhere have and that we lack in, 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 in our own region, no? which is... Very sad because, because um, I mean, if, if, as, if an entrepreneur in LATAM is solving a problem, a health problem or, uh, you know, uh, some, some basic problems of humanity and they are solving it in an efficient way, they need to understand that this can be a solution for the whole world, right? It's not just about Mexico. It's not about Monterrey or, or Mexico City. It's something that can provide a solution to a huge problem that humanity faces. And if they have this shift, in, I mean, this mindset, mindset, then it's very different how they, they go around it, go, go around growing the company, thinking how to scale it, uh, how to make the, the product really competitive worldwide and comparing themselves with companies in oh, every region, right? right? Now we don't compete with our neighbor. We compete with the guys in India, in Israel, in, in Japan. I don't know. So we need to know that the boundaries be, that used, we you used to have boundaries. are gone. Technology has evaporated them. Mm -hmm. And now everybody has to think global in order and to succeed and to scale. No? And dream big. I think dream something big. that we exactly. have to promote in, in, in all the generations is to dream big. Definitely. Start dreaming big. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I said it before in Merida. That's why she's looking at me. I, I already heard you said that. <laughs> but it's true. We went. Uh, it, it, it was a, um, a panel of, of women. And when you see women's project, they usually it's like, I will sell my soaps in this small... Hey, there are a lot of boutique hotels where you, if you have organic soaps and uh, go and find all the, of those and convince them that your product is great and then you, will, you can scale from Mexico to Guatemala to Chile to everywhere. But it's start thinking big. Uh, something that, that is really important for them to understand is that f the first things that investors see is the size of your market. What's the size of the market of your product? If the size of the market is attractive and you can really grow, then it would be attractive. If the model is right, then it would be attractive. But sometimes this is not in their minds when they start. It's like, oh, I know how to do this, so I will start by doing this because I know how to do it. And it's like, okay, change your, your mind. See at the mar watch the market. You no, want no, to no, say correct. something? No, I no, know. no, I, th I totally agree. I think, <laughs> I think, I think the, the, the big difference between a, a European pitch, a US pitch on a, on a project, on a company, and a Latin America pitch is, is precisely the addressable market, no? They, uh, we tend to focus more on, on the schools in our city, on, or the clients within our community, or the south of Mexico, or Chile, sometimes regional. Like, but uh, there, there's many times that the addressable market is not only your community, it's you shouldn't be thinking that, limit, that limited. And, and when we go and see what, what's, uh, what others, what others entre entrepreneurs are doing in, in the US and in Europe, well, th they are always thinking about the global scale they can have and, 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 and thinking about the Facebooks of the world and how uh, and those types of companies that really have taken over the, the, the I mean, the, the, the whole addressable market, no? So, so definitely I think that's, that's a challenge that we have and that's something that we need to work on. And also be building teams. I think an, an important part is to acknowledge what are your skills and what are you lacking of. And if you're lacking of analysis or if you're lacking of uh, technology knowledge, then have a team that covers those lacks and that really fulfills everything that is needed to have a successful company. Correct. I, do you want no, any? <laughs> okay, uh, they ask of, also if uh, you have questions and answers. Yes, please. There is... Hello. Please don't be rude. <laughs> <laughs> Please be rude. <laughs> Hello, my name is Pablo Cervantes. Uh, I, I'm a managing partner of PC Capital, a growth social impact manager in Mexico and Latin America. I want to thank you all for your words and your experience. And I, have, I want a special thanks to Sandra and to, and to Ana Laura because they have supported us for more than five years. So thank you very much. And my question goes to Fernanda. Hey, Fernanda, <laughs> you are, well, your family, it seems that it's a very successful family. I don't know which generation you are, for yes. if you're second, third, I don't know. I'm third generation. Third generation. Uh, can you share with us what's your strategy about investing outside of Chile? And if you invest in direct investors, funds, fund of funds, what type of strategy yeah. do you do? I mean, I can only talk about my experience because my family is a different thing. So what we're developing is a fund called uh, Mosaico Ventures. We haven't yet done any investment because we want to be very critical of how we position it and how we can address it. Because I think the challenge right now that's happening and they said everyone in the world uh, thinks, you know, impact investing is fashionably or like in trend, right? Because exactly like the third generation, which I'm part of, is changing the way they're thinking. We can see, you know, the, the actual problems and issues that, you know, the world has. We can see climate change. We can see, you know, the levels of inequality. So now the third generation doesn't want to invest just for the sake of earning money. You want to invest with purpose, right? And so I think 
in, in, my, in my point of view, what we've been developing is more of a strategic way to, do, to position impact as real impact. Not as just, you know, this greenwashing, greenwashing. that's going around, that because of this change, this generational change. So for, for us, what we are doing is trying to understand very well what is the market need and where we want to position ourselves. So we haven't really like invested in direct uh, funds or anything, but I think uh, personally it would be direct, direct investments. Yeah. I actually was like, I was telling Julian now like, oh, oh my God, I hope uh, that question is not for me. <laughs> 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 it was. And do you think it's difficult to convince more of your family to look at I this investment? I think it's not, because, yeah. I mean, and, and I mentioned what has happened in Chile right now. Mm -hmm. Like, these things are things that, you know, we've been talking as a family for, for years, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think my family has been a pioneer in the way of, of how they, they've been doing things. And, of course, there's always, you know, something else that you can do. But I think... And I love this phrase, like, let's not the perfect be the enemy of the good, you know. You can't change things one day to the next. So it's like a, an evolution. I think right now, uh, because of the third generation, because what I mentioned, it's much easier to have this conversation of how important it is to actually include impact in what you're doing. Because it's no longer something that you can, like, shove under the rug. It's something that we're seeing, we're living. And mm -hmm. I don't think it's only Latin America. I think it's worldwide. So. Absolutely. Is there another question? In there is one hand there, there please. Um, this, this question is for Juliana. I think you work in pension funds, and a lot of the pension funds in Latin America um, use international vehicles to make their investment, like, for example, close funds or mutual funds to invest internationally. So why you, as a client of these funds, you don't ask for impact investment vehicles to do your private equity investments, or if you have done that um, before, what is your experience with that? <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, so you, you raised an, an, a very interesting point, which Tanya was hinting about, was think, hinting about it uh, before. So in, in the very specific case of Mexico, it is, it is difficult to access those funds that you're referring to because of regulation. Uh, in, in, in case of Chile and Peru and, and, and other countries, it's, it's easier, although it's not as easy as in other de developed countries to get these types of structures and, and, and get them going into impact investing. No? Uh, I'll tell you about a specific case uh, where we are jointly working in, in Mexico to, to get this uh, going, which is uh, we are building up a structure uh, to, so, so the corporates in Mexico and the pension funds and institutional money can actually invest in impact, uh, in impact investing. No? There, there was previously never a strategy that allowed them to do it. So that's what Tanya was referring to before. No? Even if you want it, you couldn't. So that's, that's a great barrier that we're trying to, to wreck. And, and, and I think we're, 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 we're almost getting there. Uh, in, in other types of Latin America, and perhaps you know better, but but there's uh, there's there, it's, it's easier, mm -hmm. it's l less constraints, and I think they're starting to they're starting to I mean to invest in these types of products as as the theme gets more focused and it gets trendier and and the big uh, I mean the, the KKRs of the world and all of those guys are starting uh, to develop uh, their own strategies with an impact and offer them to to the to the broader public I think that's becoming uh, more and more common uh, but, but, but I do want to emphasize that that regulation indeed is a, is, is a problem for for access I would like to ask you to give like Two minutes conclusion or a conclusion, please. Can we start with you, Sandra? Um, well, you would like to <laughs> conclude here. <laughs> two minute conclusion. Uh, I, I, I mean, on, on, on my personal, my personal side, I, I say that I would say that investing with impact is something that you connect with from the heart, and it's not something that you do because it's right to do. It's just because you feel that you have to do it. Uh, when I personally got into the opportunity to work, I, I used to work in the World Bank and I worked there a good part of my professional life. <laughs> I don't want to put numbers on it <laughs> so that you don't do the math. <laughs> but that's where I really become in love with development and with, with the impact. And I, and I really saw 
the power of money uh, in, in very you know, concrete ways of how to impact the population and the life of the, of the impoverished. And, and that changed my mind now. So since then, I think that my, my, my professional career has only been towards, towards impact. And I think, and I'm positive, that this is only going to grow because, as Fernanda mentioned, and we all did here, this is not something nice to have. This is a requirement. Society cannot continue if we do not have consciousness of how to solve the great problems and challenges of humanity. So for me, this is not a trend. This is a future. And it's just a way of how, how you are going to tackle, tackle it from, from where you are, right? And there's many actors, and, and each one has to do its role to evolve, and especially in the region where it's a very nascent and new ecosystem. We, need, we have to work together, and there's a lot to do with them. Thank you. Fernanda, please. After that is a little bit no, difficult. But yeah. I, well, we have a few minutes. We are so done. No. <laughs> We're done. No, I, I, I agree with, with Sandra. Um, I think my conclusion, and I think it's, it's very good to have all these different actors in, sitting in a, in a panel, is basically the, the idea of collaboration. Because at the end, uh, you're tackling subjects that you know, we need to solve. So if we don't collaborate each player with each other and basically build on like more support and, and, and to tackle all these problems that we need to solve, then without collaboration, I mean, I don't think we can solve anything. So I think for my, my conclusion would be, you know, hopefully we all collaborate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, another. Uh, and yeah, that these are, these are very important subjects that, you know, they're very real in the moment that we're be, we are living, so we cannot longer ignore them. Great. So yeah, so that's a, it's a difficult one, but it's so if we if we just abstract a little bit and, and look at the at the at the money that it's going around in the world and look at this 17 trillion dollars uh, that the corporate America has in pension funds and the the three billion dollars that Mexico has and, and growing into doubling the size in three years and Chile the same thing and, and, and Peru and Latin America. I mean, thinking about the amount of money that's available for investments, it's just mind blowing. And and if 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 only a small proportion were were to get to these projects, well, there there would be a significant change, no? But we need to understand that the right incentives have to be uh, put in place to link the, the, that mass of money to this impact projects that everyone wants to, to, to see developing, no? So, just, I, I would just say that we, we have to remember that these projects are, uh, they, they, have to, they have to be good in incentives. It's, it's not charity. We have to understand that in an institutional perspective way. We're not a foundation. I mean, it's not charity. So they have to compete in risk and return in in, in business uh, in business plans and, and, and in all of other matters with the traditional investing and, and perhaps even adding more value by being uh, impactful, no? Great. Then, yeah. <laughs> Just leave me 30 all seconds. All of the above. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> No, well, you yes, say I, a lot. I think I, I just want to add uh, that uh, it's 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 uh, as they said it's not a trend, and uh, I think that it's not because we are supposed to do. It's because now the market is requiring that, starting to require that, right? I I continuously uh, uh, receive questions. Uh, from investors, I mean uh, equity investors, uh, what are you doing in this type of matters? It's not only doing ESG uh, uh, checked; it's, it's going a little bit further. And uh, and the market, I, I think the market is is on starting to understand that. Not yet, many maybe in Mexico, but but globally, the market is it, going to be a demand from the market. So as long as you a start or, 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 I mean, put your forces in, in, into this, it will be much better for your company, but, but if you're an entrepreneur, much better for you to, to communicate uh, this. If you are a corporation, much better for you in your stock price if you uh, have a commitment on this regard as well. So uh, just, just put it in your agenda. It's, it's going to be a demand, a demand from the market eventually. Mm -hmm. 
Great. So for me, it's just please look at Latin America and invest meaning with meaning. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> 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 picture, picture.